This is Derif Sides. This HTML tutorial is about image posi positioning. Here we have a page titled Image posi Positioning, and the first section is about consecutive images. Images that follow each other consecutively in the page just appear left to right with some default padding between them as you can see by the background showing through there that's just the default three images consecutive the next section is where we use break tags to force the images to go to a new line because the break creates a new line breaks the current line so the three images appear on separate lines this image over here, if we hover over it, has a hover title. It says it's a, an image that's positioned absolute at a location of 700, 700. That is a, a left of 700 and a top of 700. So we'll see that when we get to the HTML code. The next section, an image between text. We have a paragraph, a second paragraph, and an image between those two paragraphs. And the default display will look like this, with the image taking up its own vertical space and everything left justified. The next section the difference here is we center the image rather than use the default left justification. Next, we have two sections. The first one uses a float style to have the image float left. It takes the image out of the normal flow and moves it left. So we have the first paragraph and then the image floats left and the second paragraph is next to it here. <clears throat> then the next section begins but this image is still floating left so it's left of that. Here's the first paragraph for that. The image here is a float right. It takes it out of the normal flow so then the second paragraph of this second section appears with the image floating right. And then we have down here a little displayed text showing that we cleared both floats so that we would return to the normal. This section mentions the absolute positioning which occurs here uh, relatively speaking as we move down the page the absolutely positioned image actually occurs here but since we specify 700 by 700 that happens to be way up here still down the page a ways and then this next section here we use relative positioning not absolute positioning and not default positioning but relative positioning with stacking. Relative positioning takes an image and relative to its normal location you can move it to the left, to the right, up or down. If you want to go left you have to use a minus displacement for your relative position. If you want to go to the right you use a positive displacement. And the stacking is through a Z index that determines the, if you picture images being stacked on top of each other, that's what's happening here. This first image has a Z index as we hover over it of zero, which is the default. And the next one is one, so it's going to be higher in the stack order and it overlays the first image so you only see the actual white background of this image is chopping off the first image here. The middle image has a Z index of 2 
So it is overlaying this one here and this one here. This one is Z index 1, so it's a, a layer lower than this one here. So it's being chopped off there. And it, don't forget, there's some relative positioning going on here to move them around. Otherwise, they wouldn't overlap um, to even be able to see the stacking. And this last one here is Z index 0 again. They're the same image. It's this image here in the center. There's five of them. And it's through the relative positioning and the stacking that this effect here appears. The final section, we have an image. And we rotate it through some rotations a 90 degree clockwise, 180 degrees, and 270 degrees. We're now going to go look at the HTML code used to create this display. Here's the HTML. The H2 for the title, center aligned, subtitle or section headings or H3s. Our first section on consecutive images. We have three images in a row with the same width, same images, and we saw that they flow from left to right. If there was many of them, when they got to the far edge of the page, they'd wrap to the next line. It's a flow layout concept. The next section, those same images, but we put break tags after the first two to cause the flow to move to the next line. So they're each on a separate um, horizontal row or line. The next section, <clears throat> we have a paragraph, another paragraph, and between them, an image. The next section, the difference here, the image that's between the two paragraphs is centered through this style here. It changes the display to block to make sure it's a block display for the image and gives it an auto value for the margin left and the margin right properties which automatically balances the left margin and the right margin to be the same size centering the whole block in the page. The next section uses a float left. There's a style on the image through the style attribute. The style property is float and the value is left. It makes the image, takes it out of the normal flow and floats it to the left. The next section is float right. And then notice that we have a paragraph in the next section with this text here that we saw just to give the comment of what's going on. It says here both floats are cleared. That's the text for the paragraph, but what really happens is the style for the paragraph has a clear property that says both. So it's going to clear left and right floats at that point and go back to the normal uh, flow. Absolute positioning, our image here has a style with a position absolute that is what specifies that it uses absolute positioning and once that's been specified, we give it a left of 700 pixels, px for pixel, and a top of 700 pixels. If you're not familiar with cascading style sheet styles, that's okay. You can just use this. Notice that it's a style attribute on the tag. The entire style is within double quotes. 
because it's the value of the style. And each style in there is separated from the next one by a semicolon. And each style itself has a property value, a property and a value separated by a colon. So this style attribute has three different styles in it. It has a position absolute, left 700, top 700. And the title attribute allows the little pop-up to occur when you put the, the mouse over the image, the title pops up in that little window. Relative positioning with stacking. Two things here. First of all, notice that most of the images, all of them except the first one, use position relative. And notice the negative 100 pixels on the left to move it over to the left so that it will overlap the one before it. Normally it wouldn't do that. It would just flow next to it. But with the relative we can use this kind of a attribute here a left style to overlap. And then the Z index properties, notice they go 0, 1, 2, and then 1, 0. Finally, a rotations section. And first, just the regular image. And then to rotate it, there's a style. And the style has three different variants because the different browsers will look for different particular style properties here. There's a transform, rotate 90 degree, MS transform, that's for Microsoft transform, rotate 90 degree, and WebKit transform, rotate 90 degree, and they have to be exactly syntactically as shown here. And the next one uses 180, the next one 270. That's the end of the HTML. <clears throat> We're going to go one more time back to the display, the page in the browser. Here's the page again with the default flow of the images consecutively with breaks. The absolutely position with the title hover pop-up image between two paragraphs, centered one using the margin left auto, margin right auto, the floating left and floating right images, clearing both those floats and when you clear them you would not normally show any text you would just use a, if you wanted a paragraph with no text and the clear Absolute positioning, comment here being shown, uh, text on the page. And you, we saw that it goes where it's specified by the coordinates. Here again is the relative positioning with stacking through the Z index, the Z order. And finally, the rotations of an image.